Okay, I am here um, in Modi'in with my good friend Karen Barabash Benedek. And um, she, even though she's a nurse right now, she's also been a guide for historical places and natural places in Israel. And we are at a park called Ayalon um, that used to be called Park Canada. And it's in Modi'in, just a few minutes from her house. And she's going to tell us a little bit about this, uh, this grave that we're sitting next to right now. So... Mel and I were talking about the fact that one of the things I love in Israel is that you can actually go with the Bible, with the Torah, and learn from the Torah and see the existence here in Israel. So even the fact that this park called Ayalon, it's because of the battle that ran here with Yoshua bin Nun. Shemesh begiv'on dom and yareach be'emek Ayalon. So when they were fighting, the sun didn't, um, didn't rise in front of their face and it stood right here. And one of the places that I love the most is this place, because you can see the connection between this area, which Bar Kochva and the Metatiao family grew up here in this area, and the connection to Jerusalem. And you can see that we have around here, Mel will show you later, some um, olive trees, because that's where they used to make the olive to the temple. And we're sitting right outside of this grave, uh, this cave, that it's a grave cave. and. We know for a fact that it's used to, uh, like it's uh, from the second temple. And how do we know that? Because there was a certain way of burying people back then. And we, again, we know it from the Torah, because the Torah keeps telling us that um, when someone passed away, there is this sentence saying, Ne'esaf elatzmot avotav, like he, his bone was collected with his ancestors and, and uh, parents. And in this case, you can see how, how our um, until this day, the way we grieve started here, because when someone died, they put the body inside. There are two beds here, which um, maybe later we can see, and they should have waited for 11 months, because 11 months is the time that it takes for the flesh to disappear and only the bone stayed. And only after 11 months, they used to open this um, cave and collect the bones and put it in a mutual um, place that they dig, so all the bones and all the ancestors and uh, fathers and mothers were collected in the same uh, in the same uh, hall. And we're actually sitting in where it used to be the Sukkot of Elim, which for seven days people came over here and kind of helped the family, brought them food, grieved with them. And after seven days, they had to leave this area because it wasn't, you, tell, you don't take the grief with you back home. You, you leave it here and come only 11 months later. After uh, Second Temple was ruined, uh, there was Chazona Atzamot HaYevishot. Yechezkel said that one day the Messiah will come and, and all the death will raise up. And that's when they switch the way they were buried people. And they're not, they stopped burying them in one hole, in one cave. They start to bury them in a coffin, um, stone coffin. And we can see those stones in Bet Sharim up in the Galila, because that's where the leadership of Jerusalem had to move since Jerusalem was destroyed. They had to move to the Galila, and that's how they start buried their death. So for me, walking here and actually take the Torah and learn from the Torah, watching these views right next to my house, this is my connection to, to this place. This is my connection to Israel. And I love this connection. I feel like this is my roots, my Jewish roots here. Thank you. <laughs>